for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Harrison, Johnny. Oh, hiya. How fast can you get to Beverly Hills, California? Why? You've got to find an uncut canary. Uh, let's take that again, slowly, shall we? It's a diamond, Johnny. A rough, uncut, orange-yellow diamond they call a canary. Weighs 89 carats, and it's insured by us for $125,000. Hmm, pretty expensive bird. Yeah, it was more to the point. It took wings sometime last night and hasn't been seen since. How about it, Johnny? I'll see what I can do. Right here, I'd like to take a few seconds to talk about dreams. You know, psychologists tell us that dreams are one of the most common forms of escape from the everyday world. But what would you think if you woke up one morning and read in the paper that the president had appointed an elephant to the cabinet? Yes, I agree. That is a ridiculous question. And it doesn't really have anything to do with animals in politics. Actually, it's a question of memory. I was thinking of the Secretary of State when I asked this, and you'll have to agree that with all of the varied and difficult jobs he has to do, the Secretary of State would have to have the memory of an elephant. The Secretary's biggest job, of course, is managing our country's foreign affairs for the President. Since the President can't be in all the foreign countries at the same time, he sends ambassadors and ministers to the various capitals, and sets up consular officers in the big commercial centers of the world to assist the Secretary of State. Then, when questions arise, the officials of foreign countries get together with the American ambassadors or ministers or consuls, depending on the country and the type of problem, and they iron out their difficulties. Of course, there are many treaties and international laws which guide these conferences. With their help, and the work done by our State Department, we're pretty certain of getting along all right when we tour foreign countries or have business dealings with them. In other words, whenever we have dealings of any sort with countries other than our own, it is the Secretary of State and his department who acts as our intermediary. <laughs> Account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Eastern Indemnity and Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the uncut canary matter. Expense account item one, one hundred eighty-one dollars and sixty cents. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Los Angeles, California. Expense account item two, three dollars and seventy-five cents. Cab fare from the International Airport to a rich-looking jewelry store in Beverly Hills. Inscribed on the door in what looked like a thin line of pure platinum was the single name Johannes. According to Harrison, this had been the last known nesting place of the uncut canary. Johanna may have been, I doubted that it was the tall, artistic type with the heavyweight padded shoulders who was looking down his long, aristocratic nose at me. Yes. I'd like to see Johanna. May I ask who you are, sir? My name is Dollar, insurance investigator. Oh, you hear about the Minas Gerais canary, eh? If that's the full name of the missing diamond, yes. I believe you'd better come back in the morning, Mr. Dollar. Any particular reason why? No, it's been a trying day for Madame Johanna. She's quite fatigued. Nobody's too tired to spend a few minutes trying to collect $125,000. In the morning, Mr. Dollar. I'm certain Madame Johanna will be pleased to interview you then. Maybe I won't be in the mood then. Oh, really? It's a possibility. Well, that's your affair, huh? No, not the way I see it. Madame Johanna is claiming the loss. She's entitled to her own opportunity to slam the door in my face. You're quite correct, Mr. Dollar, and I take this opportunity to open it instead. Madam, you're fine. I, I thought you were resting in your office. I did not wish to have you disturbed. The next time, Father, I would thank you not to be so overly zealous in your desire to protect my health at the expense of my bank account. Come this way, please, Mr. Dollar.
Want to sit down, Mr. Dollar? Thanks. You wish to discuss the miniature rice canary, Mr. Dollar. But if I can tell you about it. Well, you might begin by telling me its history. I purchased it in Rio from a local broker down there a year ago last September. Over a year ago. You find something surprising about that? Well, you've got a pretty large investment in an uncut stone. That's a long time to have it just sitting around, isn't it? The cutting of a diamond that size is a very delicate matter, Mr. Dollar. Months must be spent studying it, planning the precise manner in which it is to be finally cut and polished. Correct cleavage on such a stone could enhance its value three times over. Incorrect cleavage could prove disastrous. How's that? Diamonds are capricious. A slight mistake may cause the gem to fly into a hundred bits. A bitter lesson my father learned some 25 years ago with a stone similar to the canary. I do not intend to make the same mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh, when did you first notice the thing? It was 9.30 last night. Carter and I came down here to watch the cleavage of the stone. And you were going to have it cut last night? Yes. We have two of the finest diamond cutters in the world working here. Adolf Spears and Hans Blessman. They have been with me and my father before me for over 30 years. I see. And uh, when you came down here? Carter opened the vault. The canary was gone. Carter has the combination? Yes. Anyone else? Adolf? Hans? And of course myself. Was the vault touched in any way? Any attempt made to break into it? No. Well, that boils down the number of suspects. No, Mr. Dollar. It couldn't possibly be one of my employees. I would be willing to swear to it. Well, you wouldn't be the first to make a mistake about something like that. Oh, you do not know these people like I do. Well, you couldn't say that. During all the years, they've... You're quite confused. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Yes. Oh, no. I see. Thank you. I will tell them. Something wrong? That was Ada Spears. He said if I would send the police over to his house immediately, he would give them the uncut canary. I put in a call to Chief Anderson of the Beverly Hills Police Force, and a few minutes later, Lieutenant Hankins of his office came by and picked me up. How come you're on this, Hankins? You're still in homicide, aren't you? Yeah, but the head of robbery's been out with a call, and with this latest development, the chief sent me out to wrap this up and see you on your way. Disappointed? You know better than that. Always glad to see you. Yeah, it looks like a quick ending to a long trip, Donna. Well, I won't complain. <laughs> Why should you? Counting traveling time, you'll get two full days' pay for a few minutes' work. Not bad. Jealous? Not me. You insurance boys can have it. Rather work on the force, huh? Uh, maybe it doesn't pay as well, but I know I can figure on a check every two weeks. Hang on, we turn here. Well, what's your trouble making that turn? Getting back at an angle that way, it's not too easy to figure. Now, that's Johanna. There's a woman who'd wring the sweat out of a man. Always got an eye out for a fast buck. I don't think she's going to be too happy to get that uncut canary back. Why is that? Well, the rumor around town is that it can't be cut. Claws in it? Oh, the stone's clear enough, but some of them are just shaped wrong. Can't be split clean. The whole stone's liable to break in the dust if you try to cleave it. Do you think that's what's wrong with the uncut canary? Well, she's had it hanging around her shop for over a year and a half. Bought it at a price way under the market. There's got to be some reason for it. Uh-huh. How much you figure the stone would be worth if it could split? Hmm. Uh, Maybe a quarter of a million, give or take a little. It'd be easier to sell that way, too. This way, her money's tied up in it, and they say she's tight for cash. Uh, who isn't? I don't know what you mean. Well, that's her worry, not ours. Here's Adolf Beer's house. Let's go in and get it. seem too anxious to turn it over now. Go 
door is locked. No lights inside. Let's try the back. All right. Hear that? Sounds like a car motor running somewhere. In the garage, maybe. There's the garage, Dollar. Lights on inside. The door's closed. Come on. It's no easy job to wrestle some 200 pounds of dead weight out from behind the wheel of a car in a monoxide-filled garage. But Hankins and I finally managed it. Over here. In the grass. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. <sighs> Adolph Beers? Yeah. The sense she won't tell us where that uncut canary is now. Yeah, it's a sense she couldn't have told Johanna only 15 minutes ago either. While Lieutenant Hankins waited for the homicide boys to arrive, I walked down to the corner drugstore and tried to make some phone calls. I was phenomenally unsuccessful. There was no answer at the jewelry store, at Johanna's home, or at the bachelor apartment of the obnoxious Mr. Carter. Expense account item three, a dollar and seventy-five cents. Cab fare from the corner drugstore to the residence of Johanna's other diamond cutter, Hans Plessman. Are you Hans Plessman? Of course I am, of course. And you must be from Albert. Let me have it at once, at once. Do you hear? I think you've made some kind of a mistake, Mr. Plessman. My name is Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. I'm not interested in your name, young man. I just want the lenses I ordered from Albert for my refractometer. The lenses for my... Insurance investigator. Is that what you said, insurance? That's right, Mr. Plessman. I want to ask you a few questions. Questions? Questions? What kind of questions? About the Minas Gerais canary... What did you want to know about? Insurance investigator, eh? What do you want to know about? Could we talk about it inside? Inside? Oh, 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 yes, oh, yes, inside. Of course, of course. Come in. Thanks. Told the police all I know about it. Why are you coming around bothering me? Why don't you question Arnold? Yes, question Arnold. You think he had something to do with it? Didn't say that. Just asked you why you didn't question him. Adolf Beers is dead, Mr. Plessman. Dead? Adolf's dead? That's right. Well, 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 well. Adolf's dead. He might have been murdered. Murder? Adolf's murder? Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Maybe somebody wanted to get the canary from him. Nobody could have murdered poor Adolf for that. He didn't steal the canary. Didn't steal it. What makes you so sure, Mr. Plessman? Because I stole it. That's why. Murdering poor Adolf when I stole the uncut canary. <laughs> many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? During the Black Hawk War in 1832, he volunteered for service and was made captain of his company. As a member of Congress in 1847, he was opposed to the Mexican War. He also opposed the Kansas-Nebraska Bill, which favored the extension of slavery. During this time, he was offered the governorship of the Oregon Territory, but refused it. Over six feet tall and not particularly good-looking, he was known for his droll sense of humor. If you don't have his name by now, here's an important clue. His unexpected acceptance of an invitation to attend the dedication of a soldier cemetery was responsible for one of the greatest speeches in our history. Who was he? Abraham Lincoln, 16th President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Good old Harry. What a host. When Harry throws a party, nobody goes thirsty. Here, let me freshen up that drink. Good old Harry is such a great host. How come Bill and Jean had such a terrible fight? I want to go home right now. Why not? It's a great party. I don't care. No, I want to go home right now. now you... How come Bob had a little trouble driving home? <laughs> And how come everybody who felt so good last night 
feels so bad this morning. Oh. Maybe good old Harry is not such a great host after all. Maybe good old Harry is a pusher, a neighborhood pusher. Harry pushes alcohol. So if you serve alcohol, please, don't be a pusher. And if you're a guest, don't let good old Harry or anyone else push you into drinking more than you want. A public service message from this station and the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. After his astounding statement about stealing the uncut canary, the heretofore voluble Hans Plessman closed up completely. He refused to say anything about anything. And two and a half hours later, at the Beverly Hills police station, the situation was unchanged. Unless Plessman talks or we dig up something else, we won't be able to hold him long. And I don't think he's the only one who's clamming up about that canary. Oh, uh, Johanna? I'd like to know who really called her on the phone when she sent us up to Adolph Beer's house. We'll find out when we locate her. She's not at her home at the office, though. No sign of the stone at Beer's? Nothing. A couple of the boys still going through the place. They started at Plessman's, too. Hankins. Uh huh? Okay, Doc, thanks. Autopsy surgeon, they're posting Beer's now. Looks like homicide, all right. Heavy blows struck on the back of his head. Doc's offering eight to five. There'll be no monoxide in the bloodstream. Well, I won't cover that. You're going somewhere? Yeah, the evening's still young. I might as well try to earn some of that big money. You think I'm getting paid for this job? Expense account item four. $2.25. Cab fare from Beverly Hills to the apartment of Johanna's assistant, Mr. Charles Carter. Stripped down to a pair of shorts, Carter was standing on his head at one end of the room, heels resting lightly against the wall. Oh, it's you, Dollar. What's the idea of that? What? The headstand. Tones up the system, reverses the blood flow, good tonic for rejuvenating muscular tissue, strengthening the internal organs. You don't say. You should try it sometime. Most beneficial. Amazing. What do you want here, Dollar? What? Oh, well, I was just wondering uh, where you were earlier this evening after you left the shop. Down at the beach. Exercise there for an hour every evening. Why? Adolf Beers is dead. Oh, not surprised. Oh? Overweight. Disgusting. Poorly cared for body. Can't abuse the machinery of life, Dollar. It'll refuse to function. In this case, the refusal wasn't voluntary. Oh, so that's why you wanted to know where I was. Well, now you know. Mm Mm-hmm. Johanna wasn't with you, was she? No, I haven't any idea where she... Oh, now you're going too far, Dollar. Oh, why? Johanna's the epitome of all womanhood. A gentle, delicate soul. I'll not have her maligned by you or anyone else. Is that clear? Oh, sure. But I'd still like to know where she was. Now, tell me, Carter, how often do you do that headstand stunt? Twice a day. And how long do you keep it up each time? Thirty four minutes. Remarkable. I hit a drugstore and tried to call Johanna's residence, but there was no answer. A call to Lieutenant Hankins brought the information that Plessman was still refusing to talk, and that they'd finished searching both his house and that of Adolf Beers. The uncut canary was still among the missing. I was drinking a cup of coffee at the fountain when I suddenly remembered something Hans Plessman had said. I grabbed the yellow phone book and started looking for an optical lens manufacturer whose name was Albert. I found one. Albert Schoenbeck. Both an office and a residence phone were listed. At that hour of the morning, the choice wasn't too tough to make. Johanna, I wonder what for many years now. And for her father before her. But to call at 
this hour of the night with such a Christian. And did you ever make lenses for a refractometer, Mr. Schoenbeck? Yeah, yeah, therefore Hans it was. Hans Plessman? Of course, Hans Plessman. Would you mind telling me what a refractometer is used for? You, you are asking me questions about this, or, or you do not even know for what it is used? It's important, Mr. Schoenbeck. Yeah, for whom important? For you or for Johanna? Both of us. Ah, so. All right, then I will tell you. It is for measuring the bend of light through a precious stone. Uh, with uh, mirrors, lenses, or the scales, this machine measures the stone's index of refraction or, or tells exactly uh, what the stone is. You, you understand what I'm saying? Well, I think I get the general idea, yeah. Could you use one to determine the proper cleavage of a diamond? For cleavage, you ask? Yeah, would it help any? I, uh, I have never thought that. Yeah, 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 it is possible, I presume. Uh, if there were some uh, interior floor, some imperfect strata of crystalline structure, uh, that could possibly show up, yeah. Uh, but uh, why do you ask? Uh, what does all this have to do with Johanna? I'm not quite sure. Thanks, Mr. Schoenbeck. <laughs> Expense account item five, $3.60. Cab fare to 621 West Canyon Road Drive at somewhere near the top of the Santa Monica Mountains, about two miles and a half from Sunset Boulevard. I just come in and was praying for bed when you rang, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, so I noticed. Then if you would please tell me quickly why you have come visiting at this late hour. It's about the rumors. Rumors? Yeah, I understand that Jewelers Row believes that Johannes is heading for the financial rocks. You came up here tonight to discuss with me the financial status of my business, Mr. Dollar? Not exactly. Well, then. But uh, suppose the rumors were true. And you're hard up for cash with $125,000 tied up in an uncut diamond that can't be sold until it's cut. And can't be cut because it'll fly into bits. That is utter nonsense. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Why? It removes any motive you may have had for stealing the uncut canary yourself. I think I'd better leave now, Mr. Dollar. You haven't denied it. You've gone too far for that. Adolf Beers must have gone pretty far, too. The reference is beyond me. Beyond Adolf now, too. Or maybe you haven't asked yourself why somebody wanted to murder him. Adolf? Murder? You didn't know? But how could I have? Just wondering. Adolf murdered. But why? Well, I'd say either Adolf took the stone and somebody got it away from him. Or he knew who did steal it and was going to talk. Either way, the result's the same. Unbelievable. Not quite as unbelievable as your statement that you talked to him on the phone when actually he'd been dead for two hours. Now it is time for you to leave, Mr. Dollar. No further explanation? None. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, did you know Hans Plessman had confessed to stealing the canary? I did. I suppose you think that's unbelievable, too. My attorney is arranging his release on a writ of habeas corpus at this very moment. Oh, that's very interesting. You sure you don't want to change your story about that supposed phone call from Adolf Beer? I do not. I didn't think so. The lack of transportation from Canyon Road Drive back to Beverly Hills didn't bother me. The walk would give me a chance to clarify my ideas about the uncut canary matter. It took me a little less than an hour to get back to Sunset Boulevard and an all-night gas station where I called Lieutenant Hankins. Yeah, that's right, Dollar. Hans Plessman was sprung about 45 minutes ago. You put a tail on him? Yeah, he went straight home. Expense account item six, a dollar and sixty-five cents cab fare again. It took about fifteen minutes to get to Hans Plessman's house. that insurance man. What, what, what do you want now? Have you cut it yet, Mr. Plessman? It was just about when you interrupted me. 
Do you mind if I watch you finish the job? Not at all, not at all. Come in, come in. Thanks. In here, right in here. Well, looks like you've got a pretty capable assistant, huh? Yes, I think our partnership in diamond cutting will prove quite successful. Of course, it will, of course. The refractometer will make the difference. Told out of that, but he wouldn't listen. He was going ahead in his own stubborn way. He would have smashed the stone, just as he did 20 years ago. So Adolf Beers was the cutter who smashed your father's stone, huh, Johanna? Yes, that is quite right, Mr. Dollar. Ruined him. Ruined him and killed him. Couldn't let that happen to my little Johanna, like my own daughter, you know. Couldn't let Adolf do that to her, too. Couldn't. So you took the diamond to keep Adolf from cutting it. It was my fault, Mr. Dollar. I wouldn't have listened to Hans's warning. I was going to let Adolf go ahead with it. Wouldn't listen to me, who was like her own father. So I had to take the stone. I was going to cut it myself, Johanna, and give it back to you as a gift. I know you were, Hans. Only Adolf saw me getting ready. He was going to stop me, so he could cut the diamond himself. Ah, yes. He shouldn't have done that. Adolf shouldn't have done that. I had to stop him. Well, we have work to do. Put the stone on the cut, Johanna. That's it. That's it. Now, hold the steel blade right on the ink line. That's it. That's it. Now, hold it firmly, but without pressure. Not, not too much pressure. So. Thank you, Hans. You've done it. Of course. Of course. But it had to be done my way. Only the refractometer showed the proper place. A stubborn fool Adolf would have ground it into bits. Bits. Well, I guess everything is all right now for you. Hey, Johanna. I will see if your business is all right. And you, young man, no trouble about the stone now, is there? No trouble. No, no, hon. There's no trouble about the stone. You understand how I couldn't let anything happen to my Johanna. Not to my little baby. Oh, his stone. Beautiful. Once I have him cut and polished, the his, his stone... Hans, what I, is it? Don't you feel well? Oh, it's all right, Johanna. I'm, I'm a, little, a little weak and shaky, that's all. I, I can't understand it. Weak, shaky like this. Ridiculous. I, I, I think I'll lie down for a bit. Mr. Dollar? Sure. Go ahead. I can't understand it. Weak, shaky... Mr. Dollar, now you know. Yeah. So it was Hans and not Adolf who called you on the phone. Yes. He told me that he had hidden the stone in my house. But not that he had killed Adolf. I brought the stone to him tonight after his release from jail. And there they are. What was once the name of Jedi von Cut Canary? A gift, Hans said. They'll accomplish everything he wanted to accomplish for me. And I'd rather I'd smash the stone into dust before this all began. I didn't want this gift from us. Account item seven, one hundred and seventy-nine dollars and twenty-five cents. Airfare and incidentals from Beverly Hills, California, back to Hartford. Expense account total three hundred and seventy-three dollars and eighty-five cents. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Sidney Marshall with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were William Johnstone, John Stevenson, Hal March, Virginia Gregg, and Fritz Feld. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at the same time when from Hollywood, John Lund again transcribes his expense account as Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.